Hello and welcome to another edition of Drinking with Comics. I'm Sean. This is Mike. And we have three guests. Not one. Tonight. Ladies and gentlemen. Not two. <laughs> three. Three. So, okay. We have Pinguino Cobb, Robert Isn't Walker. Isn't she so cuddly? <laughs> Isn't he cuddly? And Dan Fear. So, well, before we get into what you guys do, let me finish. Let me round it out. So we've got Joe Dot Baxter working the tech side and just, you know, he just threatened Mike before the show with a handgun. Maybe uh, we'll be Something able to about splice that in later. Yeah. Something about the clap. And then science officer Aaron. Hey. And we have a live studio audience again. So thank Woo. you all for coming. We got Jesus. Jesus is here. All right. <laughs> and you know what? He's just all right with me. Yes. yes. Okay, so okay. you guys, where do we start? Cuddly? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's start with Cuddly. They have the majority vote. Okay. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, there's two of us. There's one of Are you, you on Cuddly? I am not. Okay. But I have an iPhone and I don't date, so. Yeah, that's, that's my problem. <laughs> I mean, the iPhone thing. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, so you guys, Robert and Pinguino, you started basically, uh, correct me if I'm wrong and say it's like a geek friendly dating site. And the, dating app. it's called, date, thank you, app. And um, it's called Cuddly. And the C -U -D -D -L -I. kind of. D D L I. The kind of unique spin on it is it's not a hookup site, it's for actual dating. So if you want to like find somebody to go on dates with, which is, is that like outdated? That was the first thing I, when I, I, when I realized there's like, wait, there's a specialty <laughs> app for dating because is that like something nobody does anymore? And then I was like, oh my God, am I, I'm at, It's I'm all Netflix and chill that, now. Yeah, like I, yeah. I heard that's even phased out. And now. that, and when you yeah. told me like somebody was changing their DJ name to Netflix and chill, I'm like, what the hell, why would you change your name? To then I... Learned you like two weeks up? later. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. Well, like I just found out about this <laughs> on the last episode, what that means, and then I feel like I'm going to go no, home, no. Netflix and chill. I didn't know what that meant until Aaron told yeah. us. Like, yeah. I feel like I'm going to go, like, next time I see my parents, they're going to be like, stay away tonight. <laughs> We're going to Netflix and chill. You know, yeah. like when, uh, that moment when mom and dad adopt, uh, adapt to popular culture. Yeah. It's already uh, long wrong. gone, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know why Lewis yeah. isn't here tonight? He's oh. too busy doing Hulu and Hang. Ah, uh, <laughs> who's Lewis? Oh. Lewis. Who's Lewis? Lewis? Lewis. He works for you. He works oh. here. Oh, is that what he's doing? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why but I got a ring. You've people been, up been to calling him Donald all this time. I've, no, yeah, no. I, I used to call Ivan somebody else too uh, when we first hired him. But anyway, <laughs> oh my <laughs> well, back God. to Cuddly. Uh, so, tell us a little bit about Cuddly. Yeah, how did it come about? First, well, wait before we do that. Okay. I think we need a round of drinks. Because we, well, we're like five minutes Okay, in. so then before we go into that, so let's introduce Dan Fear. So you have a blog called Drunken Fandom, mm -hmm. and it's, well, you, t tell us about it. Um, so it's uh, novelty drinks for fandoms, uh, and we do, you know, we do comics, we are doing My Little Ponies are coming out, we've got Legend of Zelda up right now, uh, we just put up a recipe for really, really good butterbeer, she'll attest. Um, we do cocktails and mocktails, because... Even if you don't drink, you shouldn't not be able to participate in fandom. And we have some samples here tonight. Um, our first one is a cuddly, and we have this one. It's a cuddly carrot cocktail. Thank you. Um, this is, there's carrot cake martini recipes out there. I don't really like them that much. Um, this is my attempt to make it taste more like a carrot cake. Uh, it's very sweet, very strong. It tastes like a piece of cake in your mouth in a glass. Wow. Um, it's actually made for two. So it's made to be shared, or if you just really, really have a sweet tooth. Um, so do you guys want samples? Uh, oh, yeah, I don't yeah, want to share. I'll share with you. I'll share. <laughs> Pass it down. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Are so you're like an alchemist. Yeah. I try. I attempt. And this is how it looks when you're oh, done. Yeah, um, we have two if anyone in the audience wants to sample. Anybody? <laughs> Dave? Oh. Jesus? Yes. <laughs> Should I deliver or should they come? They can come get it. Okay, they can cool. get it. Whoever can get here first. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers, to Cheers, guys. Cheers to cuddly cocktails. Cheers. Cheers. All right. I've had so many mixing oh, these that I'm going to go with the. You're doing beer. Awesome. I'm doing dark and stormy. That is very sweet. This is oh, super my good. God. oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. This. This is one of the, so I was a bartender for five years, as I was telling you before the, before the show, and one of the things about drinks like this, to me, they're dangerous because I, like, I need my booze to be more booze than dessert or, or flavorful yeah. because otherwise it's just like, oh, this tastes great. And then the next day you're like, somebody put a bullet in my head because I feel <laughs> like I'm going to die. This is delicious. 
and it's just it's dangerous. the only thing that really lets you know that it's going to mess you up is that heat that bite mm -hmm. yeah. you know the little bit of heat yeah. in the center of your tongue where you're like oh yeah that's some booze yeah so jesus put that there so you would <laughs> um joe or aaron it, would you like to um, no okay so you go, you guys whatever comes around next you guys should I'm trapped back here oh, i thought she said she was trash oh, I, I was like you. whoa <laughs> so when we do the next ones you guys take mine because this, this is, this is, is it for me because I'm, I'm waking up at four so <laughs> if i drink you can't too many of these i ain't waking up at four so. <laughs> they, they will take care of it for you yeah. too this is totally like drinking a carrot cake. Like I'm not even kidding. It's, I have no germs. Yeah. It and if it, cream on there, that was the next. So. If it's not decadent enough, like some people like it a little bit sweeter. Uh, you just put a little whipped cream Wait, on top of it. Wait, hers is sweeter. No, that's oh. no. Like normally, I would make it sweeter. Then that. It's really sweet. <laughs> it is sweet. But well, part you, of what I want to do is make sure that all the drinks are like you can either make it yourself, mm -hmm. and it's. Cause I don't want to deal with like a bunch of layered shots that right, right. looks like this if you pour it just right. Um, or it's something that's common enough that you'll be able to like request it at a fandom party at a bar. Um, right. Then they can make it. And yeah. So if you're planning a theme party. And people know that like, you wrote these recipes and like is I mean, it kind I'm, of a... I, if I didn't write them, I credit to where I okay. take them from. No, but I'm saying like you're kind of known. You're you're a known yeah, I'm, mixologist. I'm, I'm known in my circles. Yes, I do all I the mean, bartending yeah. at the office and uh, nice. the holiday parties. They have me make um, deviant art themed drinks for the cool. for the party. So That's cool. it's fun. It's I like doing it. How'd you uh, fall into that? My dad was a bartender. Okay. Um, so my whole family growing up, um, you know, we did have dinner times together. I'm Southern, and we gathered around the table for dinner. Where are you from? <laughs> Texas. Not North that Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the real conversation started at cocktail hour. Mm -hmm. We'd get home, everyone would have martinis, that's my family's drinks, and we, you know, dinner was kind of more serious, but five o'clock cocktail was kind of talk about your day, let it all out. Um, and so to me, drinking is like coming together and yeah. getting to know each other and dropping the barriers a little bit so you can communicate. So that seems to work so well with fandom for me because most of us, you know, most, most humans have a condition of feeling alone. But it's hard for us to talk about that. But it's easy to talk about someone who's been bitten by a radioactive spider yeah, right. who's from another planet, so they're their only one. So it seems to fit so well because we're having these conversations without really realizing it. Do you have a drink like, called the Spider Bite? Not yet. Okay. I feel like you just laid out a schematic for my for me that I'm like, <laughs> oh wait a minute, I just got some like real personal insight. Yeah, but I mean, that, like that's beautiful. I really think like that was the impetus for this show was like when I, once a year I go back to Chicago and I hang out with all my friends and what we always do is we end up standing in somebody's kitchen drinking beer <laughs> talking about comics. And I was like, what would that, could that be a show? And it seems like it works pretty good because it is like, I don't know, it just, they go together. Yeah. You know, it's like drinking with comics, of course. Yeah. I have but. to say, you know, I've done a couple panels about fandom. Like I did one at San Diego Comic-Con last year. Um, just talking about fandom and intro to fandom and fandom terminology and how to get involved and what can be accomplished. And the number of people who would stay after and tell me like, you know, this one woman told me she broke her back and she was, bed bound for months and couldn't do anything except be on the internet and talk about fandom and that kept her from being isolated and it's amazing this number of stories I hear like that where you know I was alone and then fandom came in be it comics be it games be it whatever mm -hmm. brought us all together hmm. that's awesome well, you bleeding my heart out here <laughs> oh, that's, that's, <laughs> all, that's what it's all about so speaking of bleeding your heart out, yes. Well, not really. That's a terrible segue, actually. But so let's go back to Coven. <laughs> okay. Actually, can I get that bottle opener real quick? Oh, certainly. Uh, thank you. I'll give it back. Okay, back to Coven. So tell us about how, how did it start? What was why? Why did you? There's so many dating apps and websites. What made you think Coven would be different? Uh, so uh, Pinguino and I and uh, our friend Steve, who's actually in Croatia, so he's not here today, uh, started Cuddly because. Uh, dating apps today just seem mostly about hookups. Mm -hmm. They're not actually for meeting somebody who's like wants to go on a date and form kind of a serious relationship. And you know, 80% of people don't actually meet online. But um, I'm single and kind of shy, and you know, dating online is kind of the way I've done things. And so, what's in the design of Cuddly is basically all the stuff over using essentially every dating app that there is. 
um, that annoyed the heck out of me that we fixed. So, uh, you know, being able to find people that are close to you, we can do that. Uh, being able to find really great places to ask somebody out, uh, we've got that built in. Uh, making it really easy to ask somebody to meet you in a safe public place because right. you know it's always really hard when you're talking with somebody online it's like we've heard all these crazy stories like yeah. there's this guy who like does tinder dates in New York mm -hmm. and he actually met some girl at 1230 in the morning in a parking lot because they couldn't figure out of where else to meet and you know this this sort of thing happens all the time like uh, and you know we think that actually if you're gonna get people to, to date online who don't normally do that, that it really ought to be a very safe experience. And so yeah. we paid a ton of attention to, to safety. And oh, yeah. cool. It is, it's very present in the presentation when you do the app. So like I set up a, like, you know, recently separated, I set up a, um, a profile just to kind of get a feel I'm for it. Yeah, I'm cuddly. Yeah. And it's it's very, like, it, that's what it feels like. It feels, um, I don't know, it doesn't feel weird cheap. or well not cheap but it just it, it feels safe i guess you know it That's seems good. like you guys really went out of your way to like make that a, a thing because more and more there is so much negative mm -hmm. context to anything <clears throat> with the internet like there's just there's a lot of negative not just like people being negative but there's all you know all these weird horror stories and just you know i mean it's so anonymous to some degree and so i, I mean i got that right away i thought that was really cool and it's welcoming in a way Okay. So, you know, it, it's, it's almost it's, cuddly. It's kind of like, come on, yeah, right. It's like, come in, come on, give, give me That's a hug. Good. Well, yeah, dating, you know, th there are some dating apps that are all about being anonymous. And, uh, you know, for example, here in LA, there's a, a dating app for gay men called Grindr. And that's all about being anonymous. You, you in fact, can go on Grindr with, like, just a picture of your chest and no head. And you, you know, have to have your head on cuddly, right? You have to. Yeah, yeah like actually. That oh yeah, uh, that's that's the other thing. Like, we yeah. Away, yeah, yeah, we totally took away anonymity. Um, you have to log in with Google or Facebook, and you know, Facebook is really aggressive on making sure that you're actually a real human. Yeah. Uh, we also, um, you know, we actually make you post a picture of your face, and that's like, you know, just one person, not like a giant group photo with like 15 people or. You want a mountaintop like a hundred feet away, like um, yeah. you know. This is this is kind of common. Like if you look yeah. at dating, if you use dating apps, like yeah. you know, profile pictures. That's one of the hardest things. Is like, who are you even talking to? Mm -hmm. right. um, and you know, again, like we want to get you into the real world as quickly as possible. We wanna, we want to get you out of the app and into into real life. Um, and most importantly, like we want to be a dating app for geeks. Um. Oh, you know, I you guys want to talk about comic books? I never introduced the beer actually. Oh, yeah. So, I brought um, this is a you know, anything Goose Island puts out, I'll buy immediately. You guys want one? You good? Okay. Okay. Um, so this is their automail. I it took me by surprise two weeks ago. I saw it in Total Wine and it like, is fall. I had not heard of it. Um, it's great as all their beers are. It's so. not Christmas yet, so we're good. Yeah, yeah. I know. Well, but you know, like in a week. All the autumn beers will be. Um, it is autumn. It's I know, but I mean, you know, I mean, if you go into Target, the Christmas decorations are already you oh, know, saw, in that back awesome. aisle. Behind, so, like, Halloween will cycle out mm -hmm. in a couple days, and then the Christmas shit will take over. Creepy. It's but funny. anyway, I hate it's it. Yeah, I know. I, I just. Hey, y'all don't talk like that in front of Jesus, all right? Aww. <laughs> Jesus wasn't born on Christmas. <laughs> 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 um. But so yeah, I brought that. I brought a couple other things just to round it out. It doesn't out. have a label for me to read and sound. I fun. almost brought the six pack holder for you to read from it. But oh, the last yeah. time I did did that, you didn't read from it, so I was like, ah. Eh. Son of a bitch. Um, I also brought um, my friend Ray got these Guinness uh, the Guinness Blonde, which oh, yeah. he gave to me and um, Look at these. You know, I love Guinness, uh, preferably either on draft or in a can. But it's known to be dark. Well, wait, what? I mean, Guinness is... Yeah. Well, and so they've been doing this thing where I think it's every quarter they put out a new... They're, they're doing, like, they're, they did a blonde. They did a... I think they have an IPA out now, but they're trying to kind of... They're Michael jackson it. Exactly. Spreading it. It's like, and it's known, uh, known to, and then you open it, wow, it's pale ale. Or whatever, it's... Yes, I think. Know, whatever. But, Jesus but, juice. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus juice. That's, that's well, what we call him pale off. ale. Um... <laughs> But so this is the the blonde American Lager, and you know the other Guinness like the their quarterly things I've I've tried like I wasn't blown away like Guinness you know stick with what you do best, 
but this is pretty good. It's not yeah. great. It's not reinventing the wheel, but it's pretty, we'll discover. pretty drinkable. So, yeah. um, and then I had some Lagunitas too, but it, it went out. But that, you know, Lagunitas. You gotta give it to the world, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so, okay. So anyway, so now we've done the beer. So let's talk some comics. Comics. Wait, does it get any comics you want to talk about? Well, you have a Rogue shirt on, and it like I noticed the Rogue. But then it took me a while to notice that she's holding a mug of beer. And it's Uncanny Ale. Is that like a real, that's a beer shirt? Um, more so than a comic one shirt. of my friends wore this into work uh, years ago, and I was like, <clears throat> I covet your shirt. Like, I was just like, I want that shirt so badly, because X-Men is my jam, right? And oh, yeah. nice. Southern Girl, so rogue. Right. Oh, that's like, right. Who I wanted to be. And then when you touch people, they just faint. Yeah. Right? yeah. God, that would be great. No, Creeper. <laughs> Boom, you <gone. laughs> The things girls dream about. Um, we should add that to cuddly. <laughs> An app that makes people faint, like Taser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. The Taser app. And uh, she got married and moved to another state and was giving away, packing, giving away all of her things and hands me the shirt. And she's like, here, I think you're the person. You know, I don't need it here. And I'm like, I Aww. wanted this shirt, but I didn't want it this way. So now every time I wear it, I think of Lisa. Oh, Aww. that's awesome. Well, thank Should you, Should we Lisa. pour some beer on the floor for Lisa? <laughs> well, it's your place if you want to. No. You've done that before, actually. You don't seem to have No, I've poured stuff. We just clarify, she's not little. dead. She's just married. Well, no. she, she's she won't, pretty you know, close. Hair difference. <laughs> but. It's, a, no. it's a cool shirt. Lisa's though. husband's awesome, I'm sure. Um. <laughs> you should uh, talk about Weirding Willis. We should. Yeah. So our next drink is actually... Way to get us back on track. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We need it. Um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with Weirding Willows. It is a comic by Dave Elliott. The cover is Art Germ, who is an amazing artist on DeviantArt. Um, it's this wonderful little story about Alice in Wonderland grown up. Um, but he actually weaves all of these different characters from all these different classic tales together. So Mowgli is in here. Frankenstein's monster is in here. Oh, wow. um, and he does it all without changing the core of the stories. Really? So nothing has changed. All the stories happened as they did. They're just all interconnected in a modern day with kind of portal jumping and things. Oh, wow. Um, so, like, the one thing he really noticed is when Alice is in Wonderland, she's seeing all these weird things. And, yeah, she's, like, curious and curious her, but she's kind of okay with it all. So he came to the only logical conclusion, and that is that Alice is the daughter of Dr. Moreau. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. So um, he has in the story the rabbits, the Warriors Three, which is the White Rabbit, Benjamin Bunny, and Peter Rabbit. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are with Alice through a lot of their adventures. The artwork, guys, is just beautiful. It, it's awesome. Um, and that's little, that's little Hoto. If he leaves the wire, he turns into a regular rabbit and loses his memory. Oh. So we have a drink for Hoto Bunny, since we're talking rabbits today with Cuddly. That's right. Um, the White Rabbit in this, his full name is Hoto Darwin. And um, we have a carrot-infused vodka drink that is combined Made with a segue. <laughs> mm -hmm. apple juice, cranberry juice, and ginger beer, and a splash of lime. So if anyone wants to sample, lay it on me. Which one is it? This one? It's uh, they're all the same. Are you having one? Sean? Um, I have I'm had not. so many I'm, I'm of not. these mixing these. <laughs> all right. Now this one's a little more interesting. <clears throat> Aaron. Audience. Audience. I better not. You may bring it up. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. <laughs> Someone can take the big one too if you're really afraid. Okay, I just wanted for the big one. Yeah. I'll trade this one for oh, the big one. Trade totally. that one for the big one. Man show here. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Cool. So this is how it all more. goes down. Uh, I was just gonna say, like, <laughs> you know, some shit's coming off tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers, y'all. <laughs> Cheers. Now I know Sean's single. Like, oh, ready to mingle. <laughs> Wingman. Hashtag. Hashtag oh, wow. That is phenomenal. Yeah, this is really nice. Okay, I need to taste it. Let me just taste it. <laughs> it's good. But it, so there's not a lot of vodka in it, though. There's actually, it's equal parts oh. vodka and juice. Oh, really? And so that's kind of the... Really the it is I, super I, drinkable. I, come up, I try to come up with ways to match the drink to the character. You know, for some okay. it's color. Like the flash has got to be an orange drink. Like, yeah, yeah, no yeah. question. For some, um, it's ingredients. So I'm working on a Batman drink right now. I've got final taste buds going out on it. Um, mm -hmm. And it's the Dark Knight, so he needs dark rum. Yeah, there's I think some so, things yeah. that just make sense. Um, and so the blood for, of his parents. Right. So oh. <laughs> he's, oh. Guys, he has two dashes of bitters. Oh yes, <laughs> yes. Actually, he he might actually have like three or he four. He might have, but it, he's a pretty power. better dude. Can we do one called the Lazarus Pit? I'm starting to have all these ideas for drinks in the Lazarus Pit. It, it's a dangerous, it's a dangerous road to go down. Yeah. Like um, but so the idea behind this one is Hoto. If he leaves the wire, he loses his memory. 
So if you drink too many of these, you'll become as forgetful as Hoto. <laughs> wow. I hope to. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Wow. Okay. So what do you what do you got? You got a stack of stuff there. I, I see, got some comics. I see. I hate Fairyland. We talked about this before. Follow up. How did I did I talk about it on the last episode? No, no, no. A while ago. Oh, like, before it ever it came out. It was after the yeah. image. Yeah, con. yeah. Well, I mean, kind of like yours. It, yeah. You know, I hate Fairyland. It's it's uh, sort of the anti fairy tale. Well, it's, um, it's Scotty, Scotty Young, Young Scotty is, is the main artist. selling point yeah. on it, and I mean, Scotty's been doing these like sort of really cute covers for Marvel. These almost like chibi kind of art. Well, they're great, but babies. it's like. Oh, huh? go ahead. Babies. Yeah, right. Yeah. I, I, but it, it's interesting like to see him get just, his own book and do something that's not. Just doing what he wants to do. It's yeah. like Ralph yeah. Bakshi almost. Uh, just irreverent, you know, offensive if you're sensitive. Wasn't the original title I... It was, no, the original title was, no, original title was, no, original title was called Fuck Fairyland. That's it, yeah. And uh, actually at Image Expo, like, cause, so he pitched it to Image and Eric Stevenson who ran Image said, oh, we can't call it that. So I was like, dude, why? Because we, we're getting in the business of doing exclusive covers. Hey, Chris. Um, exclusive covers and stuff. I was like, we'll do the Fuck Fairyland version. And we got approval at Image Expo from Eric, from Scotty. They were going to do Fuck Fairyland. And uh, then, about three or four months later, Image stopped doing exclusive covers for shops. We did one for Love. Yeah, I, I have it. <clears throat> they only do exclusives if you're going to do a trade paperback. Which, who's going to do a thousand copies of a trade paperback? Oh, know? yeah, that's weird. So, anyway, but they went and put out their own Fuck Fairyland. They did? Which sold out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay, wow. Star Wars. Let's talk about Star Wars. Let's, let's talk about let's Star Wars. Forget my love life for a minute. Uh, Star Wars. <laughs> Star I mean, Wars. I think I love it. Like Star Wars. <laughs> I think no, it looks fun. It looks like a lot of fun. Um, it's Star, Star Wars. Wars. Yeah. Star Wars trailer. I have. Yeah. You excited? Really. I feel like I was burned so badly by the last trilogy. Right. But I really, really, really want to be excited, but I'm kind of like. Well, you've been hurt too many times. You know, yeah. you know that this is, yeah. and I, I mean, I don't even, I don't hate the, the prequels the way everyone else does. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, I mean, yeah, the first one was a little bit okay, but they were fine. Like to me, they were fine. They weren't the mm -hmm. first three, but they weren't going to be. And right. I like the way they got progressively darker. But you know that these are going to be the apology. Like they are <laughs> going out of their way to but like. Somebody yeah. What would George not do? <laughs> right. Yeah. Like I, I kind of I want this to be the Days of Future Past of the Star Wars movies. Oh. But I'm kind of like because you know if I haven't seen it. Days of Future Past retconned the third X Men movie. Yes. They just erased it from the canon. It, you don't have to watch it anymore. And you know, That's true. You know it's what's great. funny is I didn't even catch that, and I don't hate the third X Men movie because. Oh, it's horrible. I I didn't think so, and the reason why was. They clearly modeled like the whole Magneto going insane. Like my thing, I've never liked Magneto. I grew up reading X Men, never liked him. The only time I've ever liked him was when Grant Morrison wrote New X Men because mm -hmm. he was a fucking villain. He was never <laughs> to me. He was always like, oh, oh yeah, but I'm not gonna really be that badass because whatever. Grant He's Morrison like made him like an insane. Like he fucked up New York. Like he went you know ballistic, yeah. right? And so they kind of modeled it after that. And also, I hate Charles and I hate Scott, and they killed both of those. And so I was happy. I'm I was like, gonna say. I don't care what you do from this point on. I'm, you're good. Like you kill those two, I'm, I'm okay with it, man. That's, Cyclops was the only good thing about that, and that he died, and even off camera death. It didn't matter. Um, like his, he's, <laughs> I hate him so much that he's not even worth an on camera death. It's exactly. Like, you know. But well, what, what, what upset people me is Cyclops so much. He's, he's, he's just fucking. He's out. an apple polisher. He's just. You're supposed to. I hate love him. that. You're supposed to hate him. I love that. The, the only time I liked them was like the again the Grant Morrison like where they him and Wolverine go to the Hellfire Club. Wolverine orders a bottle of Jack Daniels and, and Cyclops orders a White Zinfandel. I was like, oh, dude. <laughs> and then when Bendis wrote it and he made him a villain, I thought that was like okay. Yeah. Flip the character on his ear. Anyway, continue. Sorry. But the thing that bothered me about it as a this may be a girl thing or this may just be that I grew up reading the Phoenix Saga was the Phoenix Saga like Phoenix was destroying galaxies yes. yeah. she killed so many people and then in this movie she yeah kind of yeah right right she hurt and they people. also they also yeah. they did the they did the Days of Future Past in the beginning they turned it into like a danger room scene mm -hmm. anyway why are, why are we bitching about it? Well, so, so right. <laughs> Days of Future Star Past Wars. you know the the X-Men movies I've liked, I mean, the third one, like, you know, I, I liked it, but it didn't make me, like, I was like, okay, if they don't do another one, I'm fine with it. I was surprised by First Class. I really, really liked it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really think I was going to. Yeah. And I mean, I'm like, like, I grew up reading the Claremont stuff. We talk about this all the time. I love it. I read it out of inertia for years after Labdell was writing it, like, and then just one day I was like, oh, wait, this is awful. 
and <laughs> I just jettisoned everything that I owned except for the Claremont stuff. Morrison wrote it. I read it. I have the hard covers. It's amazing. And then you know, like I wanted to read the Weed and stuff. But it was, good. it was okay. I don't know. I read the first hardcover and I was like, I don't know that I first. I don't know. I had issue. I had issues with it. But the Bendis stuff I really liked, and it surprised me that I liked it so much because it's like he found. I appreciated he found a way to bring Jean Grey back into the story without bringing her back to life. Right. So I thought that was pretty cool. And he really like he did you know some surprising things. The problem with Bendis is the books are three ninety nine. He doesn't sleep, so he writes like it would. Come, I'd miss like a week at the shop, and I'd be like, "Oh, there's six uh, <laughs> issues of uh, the the two X Men titles that he writes." Yeah. It's like, dude, take it easy. Um, but so I love X Men, and the movies are the it. way where now I can kind of get that fix. Yeah. And go ahead. I want to ask, how do you feel about the upcoming shows? I don't. Well, so what is coming up? Because I there's kind of a, lost something in all the so some TV shows. They um they gave. Disney back the rights to Fantastic Four. And movies. Galactus and Silver Surfer. And in return, they get to make X-Men movies, but Disney and Fox are both working on the X-Men shows. Okay. TV and shows TV together? Shows. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's some kind of collaboration something going it's on. It's like the Spider-Man like thing, yeah. basically, where they want some residuals right. for it. Um, and so they're doing a period piece on the Hellfire Club. So it's going to be all about the bad guys in the 60s. That sounds cool. And they're so. doing a Legion. Wait, they're doing I Legion. Legion. I don't know uh, much the, about it. Wait, wait, the character? Yeah, huh. he's getting a show. I'm upset because they were going to be doing one based off, there was rumors they were going to be doing one based off of um, X Factor Investigations, which is what I really, really wanted. But that one fizzled out. Wait, so was that... That was a while ago, and it was a Twitter thing. Was it X Factor? So when, when I hear X Factor... Investigations, I it's think. It's Madrix of, and Richter. Okay, so it's Peter David's run. Yeah, Peter David. I've never read it. I know that it's supposedly amazing, and I believe it because it's Peter David. He, David's I, excited I, about it. I will say the first half of it's really, really good, and oh, I don't want to. I don't want to say this on camera. He Did, clearly are they friends with you? Uh, uh, he clearly had some problems with his ex-wife and took it out on the okay. characters uh, in the comic. <laughs> so you should read it. <laughs> you and then go on cuddling. You shouldn't, because it involves two pregnancies, and he should not be allowed to write pregnancies. <laughs> um, I've always, I've been, it, it was, I was curious about that when he was writing it, because it seemed like they were like, Peter David, all the, you know, one of the problems with the X-Men stuff after Claremont left was it was just so convoluted, <clears throat> because not only did Claremont set up all this stuff that then nobody ever paid off on, and then Lobdell set up a bunch of stuff that he like forgot about or whatever. So it was just like, let's leave all every issue is like a new plot right. thread that will be left hanging forever. But all the you know um, weird like crossovers and events and stuff, it just got to the point where it's like this is unnavigable. And they were like, Peter David, here's your like ten characters, whatever, mm -hmm. do whatever you want. It was great because Peter David, when it started, like they were investigating the decimation. So the job of Madrix and his crew were to figure out why people lost their powers. Okay. Which is, it, it was a really cool noir style kind of investigation setup. Um, but then it got really complex with um, the Norse gods showed up after Thor and one Rain Wolfsbane got knocked up and this oh, whole wow. thing happened where she, instead of giving birth, she vomited it out and then decided because it looked like... <laughs> <laughs> was, yeah. it, was it the, the Rainbow Bridge? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> because, like, because she was a wolf was and she got knocked up by a wolf god, the baby looked like a wolf, but because it looked like a wolf, it was a demon and she had to abandon it. But then, like, two episodes later, two issues later, she's like, oh, I'm a bad mother, I have to go save my baby. And it was like, I got a little whiplash. What's going wow. on here? This is a little convoluted. Can we? Wow. But that was after there was another whole pregnancy arc in that same book where one of the females got pregnant by Madrix and she carries it to term and gives birth and Madrix picks up the baby and absorbs it because oh. it was his clone. Oh, that's weird. And I'm like, I mean, you're not allowed to write pregnancies actually. anymore. No more pregnancies for wow. you. No, 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 no. <laughs> wow. If you're like pregnant with a multiple man's kid, I would worry about like quadruplets. Well, you it was I mean? it was like, his clone. Yeah. Oh, the reason sense. that happened is his clone yeah. impregnated Oh, right, her. so he would absorb it. Right, okay. okay. Wow. wow. Spoiler, Spoiler alert. alert. Um, right. <laughs> anybody out there watching that has I mean th that was one of those books that like if you haven't read it you're probably not yeah. going to like I know probably about not. it I respect yeah. Peter David I mean his Hulk run is like amazing yeah. I'm probably it's incredible never, I'm probably, I would say, yeah, I would, I would, yes. say more I, I will say I kind of I read it for a long time I kind of rage quit because there was a whole religious thing that happened and I couldn't but 
towards the end. When well, he, was, he had a religious thing happen. Uh, no, yeah, it one had of the characters. Oh, one of the characters. Yeah. Yeah. Wolf's Bane. She always has that going on. Yeah. It involved I'm pretending that you're my baby's daddy, so you won't go to hell because you're gay. I couldn't handle that. <laughs> I couldn't, wow. ha and everyone was okay with that. Is that wow. Peter David right? Yeah. Okay. Um, but at the very end, he did a six-episode ending for or six-issue ending for it, and he actually addressed everything he said he was going to address. Oh, see, that's like, awesome. He went through and he did um, the relationship between Longshot and Shatterstar. Like that's been speculated about for years. He actually answered that. Oh wow! In a really what is weird their relationship? way. Tell so, me. Longshot is the clone of Shatterstar. Really? Who's also his parent. Because Wait, so Longshot is the clone. Longshot is the clone of Shatterstar. That's really interesting. His own grandpa. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> my cousin once. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Where's this from? Arkansas? Yeah. <laughs> Intergalactic Arkansas. AKA Mojo. Arkansas World. Factor. That's the spinoff. Oh, uh, yeah. there you go. There um, you go. Wow. So yeah, it was really cool that he went out of his way to address all that, and he did it in an interesting way. Even if you kind of finished it and went, he still addressed it. It was great. It was yeah. there was closure. You know, he there was that whole big cut thing where he had Richter and Shatterstar finally get together mm -hmm. after I read that in the in ninety five going. Yeah right. Everyone on the message board just like you're weird. I'm like, are you sure? Because I'm seeing it right here. Right. So he finally made that campaign. That made Rob yeah. Liefeld mad, right? Oh god, that was that was a CBR that I just couldn't walk away from. He just kept digging his grave deeper and deeper. Yeah, yeah he went out. He went out on CBR and said, "I can't wait to fix Shatterstar." Wrong wording to use for gay issues. Man, he he just you know I I like I I don't want to I, I always get kind of. You know, a couple of years ago, Scott Snyder and Rob Liefeld had this weird Twitter like fight. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, they did. Yeah. And, yeah. and 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 like I kind of felt like I like Scott Snyder. I don't like everything he writes, but I like some like mm -hmm. enough of what he writes. Where I'm like I'm kind of on his side, but I kind of felt like what are you fighting about? Why? Like I don't know. I mean, it, 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 the the pieces that I remember were him being like, "Yeah, well, I write Batman. It's a top selling book. So what do you do? You know?" And it's like that's kind of low hanging fruit. Like leave the guy. I mean. Leefield is a very easy target. His art style was zeitgeist. He got, I mean, it, you know, it's terrible, but at the time it well, felt... Got, I mean, I, I'm not a fan, but he is on top of the world right now with Deadpool. Well, but so here's the thing. So it's funny because in a, in a moment of genuflection like that, I followed him on Twitter. Like I encountered him at some, or uh, not Twitter, Instagram. I encountered him at some point. I started and I was following like, him on what? Tinder recently. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to prove that. You should, you should dress like Shatterstar. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, <laughs> Father, I've come for you. I'm um, in my Deadpool gear. There you go. Uh, but yeah, but it, it. you know, I was saying, right, whatever. I mean, let me let me confront this. Maybe he's not, you know, such a bad, not like a bad so you guys guy. Are buddies but, now, no, no, no. I follow him for a while, and like, I tried to describe this to somebody, and they said it perfect. I couldn't figure out how to put it in the words. He looks like he's always on vacation. Every photo, he's in like his sandals and shorts, and he's like, <clears throat> it's it's just the I don't know. He it really bothered me, and I came out of it. Like, yeah, fuck that guy. Kind of. I mean, well, it's not just how he dresses. No, it wasn't just how he dresses. It was like the, you would have to see the pictures in order to get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It was. It was so just Instagram weird. is where you follow him. I did. I, I stopped following him after like a couple weeks because yeah. I was like, oh, this, you know, this is actually kind of making me dislike him. So shorts and no. sandals, isn't that like half of LA though? Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, there's, there's probably more. Than I half remember of LA to always wear pants like in my Instagram stuff. photos, so Sean doesn't unfollow <laughs> me. It, it, it wasn't the sandals. It wasn't the. It was. <laughs> He's just a dick. Yeah. I'm a, I'm Hashtag. A, I'm a dick. Liefeld's probably a dick. Oh, I think um, you called me. No, 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 Ralph Liefeld. It, I, I don't know. I don't there, know. There was just something about like the. I, Never mind. It's He's it's ineffable at this point. But I feel like Rob Liefeld was probably like a virgin until he was like thirty five, which is fine. <laughs> but just from like the art I've seen, I'm like, you 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 haven't been with a woman. Yeah, like that's ever. for sure. Certainly never been with a guy because the way he draws snow shovels down the front of yes. every dude's pants. <laughs> Well, and plus, how would you even get to the junk? Because there's so many pouches right. around. You know, it's like, what do I unzip? Like, really? Like, what the hell, man? Everyone in the world stands on point. Yeah. Well, there's that weird... I never understood if it was... At, it looks like his art, but there's that Captain America... Oh, the ...where chest. then it's naked. And it looks like his art, but I, I'm assuming he didn't actually draw that, because that would be weird if he did. I Isn't mean, the big chest cat? Yeah, yeah, you know the one. Yeah. Have you seen, seen that where they photo manipulated the actual 
actor to look like Robert. No, and I, I never will. I you never will. It up. No, I, that's something we'll I put it on the show. Joe, Joe, Joe <laughs> making it put that on the show. When, when we edit, just be sure that I'm passed out or something when you put that photo in. Not a problem. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the roofie king. What? No, nothing. Oh. Um, you're like, I'm like, make sure I'm passed out. You're like, not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Got that covered. The passing out thing? Yep. Got you. I'm like, <laughs> You need more beer? I poured this myself. No, oh. I'm just making sure there's What are you drinking? Beer. What are you doing over there? You're doing a dark and stormy. Oh, dark and stormy. Okay, cool. Ginger beer. It's close, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Uh, anything else? We, we, should we talk about more? So anything you guys want to talk about? Uh, talk? Dave Dave wants to do a comic book recommendation. Yes, Dave. You want to do a com comic, com uh, comic book recommendation? Because we're too drunk to right now. <laughs> it's the first time we've ever had act like booze on the show. Yeah, we have not had booze Never before. had booze on the show. It's only been beer. Really? So I popped wow. your cherry. Yep. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, on the show, yes. <laughs> on the show. <laughs> yes. Pop the show's cherry. So what Mike uh, quickly flashed there is Dave Crossland's book, Ego Rehab, who he's going to be at the Comic Book Pavilion. At Kamikaze. Kamikaze coming up this weekend. This will weekend. air after that. So I know. I'm, I'm I, hope, I hope you used promo code BUG <laughs> to save 15% off. Go ahead. So Dave Are Crossland, you going to be at Kamikaze? Unfortunately, no. So this is my sort of love to Kamikaze and all the people that are going to be there at the Comic Book Pavilion. Crossland started his career with a passion for comic books, and as things go, you find different jobs along the way, and became an animator, and had all these comic book projects that he wanted to do, little independent things that kept getting buried in the closet, partially completed, until one day he's like, you know what, I'm going to get back to what I love, what got me into animation illustration to begin with, and sat down one morning with a cup of coffee, stack of paper, ballpoint pen, and said, I'm going to write out a script. And there came Re Ego Rehab. It's a fantastic story. I'm going to try to give as little away as possible because you should pick it up, support oh, him. Wow. It's completely creator-owned. It's black and white. It's basically him being smacked around by his inner child, telling him, get your shit together. Something's coming for you. Draw your way out of this terrible, horrible circumstance you're in. And what unfolds is just beautiful. His his expressions on his characters, the way he kind of touches you through him kind of talking to himself, basically, mm -hmm. through the book, is amazing. <laughs> Something much else to say is that please find him, Crossland, find the book, Ego Rehab. Support him so he can put out the next one, because uh, he enters a character towards the end of it, the muse. And the next one's going to be more about kind of chasing that muse and finding that inspiration. And it's just amazing. Go to Kamikaze. Find the book. It looks great. whatever you How can much do. Uh, it was ten dollars, I do believe, okay. and he did a little sketch for me inside of it. I saw that. It's awesome. Nice. Yeah, I didn't it's realize amazing. It was your copy and he did a <laughs> commission for me. If you see him at a convention, get a commission from him. It's amazing. I got him to do the first Conan ever he did. Oh wow! Apparently, he loves the Conan books from back in the day, and I kind of grew up on those too. But he had never drawn one before. He looks at them for inspiration for monstrous and bestial type guys, and like mangy, tough guys. And he had never drawn. It's unbelievable. Like if if I hadn't told you it's not a print, you'd swear it's like a perfect print made. Nice. I got to watch <laughs> him do most of it. He's amazing. Eagle Rehab. All right, Eagle Pick Rehab. Dave's yeah. awesome. Nice. Awesome. Good job, Dave. Slightly inebriated, I can tell, but that's okay. <laughs> so, As so you should be. Dave Crossland's actually one of my favorite artists, like probably top ten favorite. And his live art is really, really good. If you ever have a chance to see him perform. Nice. I don't know if he still does, but uh, yeah. I, if we can get some, I mean, it's what is it Tuesday now? Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'd love to get something put together. That's like, put that down there. I'm gonna give this to you because we're all in. We're gonna forget. Yeah, <laughs> that has a. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, what, I, real quick, I wanted to throw a shout out. Um, we have a friend. I mean, I, I only know him through the bug, but Adam Marcus and his wife Deborah, they yeah. wrote a movie recently. Oh yeah, um, Momentum. Well, I mean, they probably wrote it a while ago, but the movie is on iTunes for rent. It's called Momentum. Have you seen it? I watched it a couple nights ago, and man, it's fucking awesome. Like it, you know, like action movies kind of did this thing. Like you look back at the '80s and the action movies. There's like a couple. There's Die Hard and there's Predator. I mean, mm -hmm. great action movies. John McTiernan. And then there's a bunch of shit like Lethal Weapon where it's like, oh, gee, really? You know? Lethal Weapon. Yeah, but it's not a good movie. It's terrible. Hey, the first two and, I thought were good. And then there's all the Steven Seagal shit or whatever. Oh. And then the action movies disappeared after Tarantino came Stone out. Stone Cold and, and Brian Bosworth. I don't know what that is. Um, action movie. But Wait, within the last couple... 
within the last couple of years, like I feel like action movies, people started making action movies. Like, why can't we make like a good movie that's an action movie? And so that kind of started to happen. Expendables. Like I've only seen the second one. I thought it was great. I don't know that I could take more than just that, but I I was really Rambo I got dragged awesome. to it. Rambo. Was well, the, first Blood's great. No, no, I don't the, know the Rambo movie. Five, whatever, whatever. <laughs> yeah. It was dude. They threw a baby in a fire. I was yeah. like, you got my money. <laughs> so I mean, I love babies. <laughs> if you want Mike to back your Kickstarter, <laughs> throw a baby in a fire. Um, I, no, was, I saw a Photoshop today of Rambo Bright. Made my oh, oh my Rambo God. Bright. Google that back. sounds like a drink I want you to make me. Oh, I like that idea. Yeah. I've, I've had a Rainbow Bright blowing sunshine up your ass, but I've never had a Rainbow Bright. Wow. I want it. It's got to be like camouflage color. Mm. It's going to have some like sort of, yeah, anyway. Go but ahead. so, so um, Adam and Deborah wrote a movie <laughs> called Momentum. It's on iTunes and uh, it's, it's, re it's just really great. Like if you liked. Um, Is it on Netflix? I don't think it's on Netflix. If you liked. Can't um, chill with it then. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you actually want to watch the movie. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, if you liked um, Taken or uh, I haven't seen the other two, but the original ones, you know, great. Um, Haywire, the Steven Soderbergh movie. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's like it's people. Like, that I know it's like a main, mainly a female well, badass like chick. People like, making like intelligent uh, uh, action, action movies, movies yeah. and the beginning of the movie really like starts with a bank job. I won't give too much away, but it took me by surprise because I was like, it felt like. You know, I'm a G.I. Joe fan. Not everything, but, you know, the Larry Hama stuff, and then, like, the movies okay. are okay. Um, and then some of the stuff IDW's done, but it felt like kind of a little bit of a love letter to G.I. Joe. There was just something what? about the, like, the, the suits that the people were wearing that were doing the job. Now, that might not have been Adam and Deborah's, you know, in their... The director, yeah. But nonetheless, like, it was a great movie, and it, I, I just really, really liked it, and I want people to support it, because it's a... I, I, I dug it, so it momentum. Uh, momentum. I rented it once. Starring it. Olga, what's her name from and, the and James Bond? I movie. really think seeing this movie, like it's so well shot, the production bud like the budget's high. I think the only thing that probably kept it from going like super wide megaplex is the fact that they didn't really have a star, but she's awesome. Yeah. That's what bugged me. It's like Olga and she's so awesome I can see. So hard to say her last name. <laughs> but huh? Thank you. Damn. I know. And that's after how many beers? Jesus. Yeah. Well, he's trying to say burst the cough, but... <laughs> <laughs> so, momentum, check it out. So anyway, okay, go yeah. ahead. Okay. Go ahead with what? I don't know. You were going to do something. And um, uh, any comics you want to recommend? Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of plugs? older, but one of the comics that I read recently that I liked was called um, I Am a Cat, and it's by Brian Talbot. And oh, Brian Talbot. Yeah, have you heard of it? It's I haven't heard of that, but I know Brian Talbot. Well, I mean, I don't know yeah. him, but I know, yeah. And yeah, his stuff's really good, like, in general, but I just started reading it, and it's basically about this cat that's, like, super rich, and he hires a blogger to write his memoirs, and, you know, she's kind of just, like, unearthing why there's a talking cat. And it's really cute, but it's really, like, kind of classy and well done at the same time. Cool. Cool. Well, I'm a cat. Yeah. Who, who published that? Do you know? Uh, Fanographics, maybe? I'm not okay. really sure. All right. Uh, my favorite is is actually a web comic. It's called uh, Always Raining Here, Ooh, and tell it's us. Uh, about two like high school gay boys who are really into each other and trying to screw it up. Oh, wait, trying to screw it up? Yeah, they're. I mean, they're just like really <laughs> bad at dating, and like they're both you know like super shy, and so they'll come together and then like have a terrible date and go apart. Um, and I don't know. It, it's they're, all their friends are trying to hook them up, um, yeah. but some of their friends are trying to sabotage it. And it just gets, you know, it, it basically um, once you start reading, if uh, if that's the kind of thing that uh, that you like to read, you'll just uh, you know basically lose a day. All right, yeah. that's cool. So, um, are they collected or? Oh no, it's a it's, it's, a, it's, a, a, web. So it's, yeah, uh, it's right. at alwaysrainyhere dot com. All right, alwaysrainyhere dot com. Take place in Seattle or? <laughs> Uh, no, it's actually the artist is the artists are in Vancouver. Well, which probably has <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, which is always raining, so you know it's similar yeah. to Seattle. Nice. Ooh. Anything you want? Um, Rat Queens. Do you guys talked uh, about yeah. that one? No, no we haven't. Um, go ahead. So it's this awesome story about these four chicks in medieval times that are questers, basically. But they've kind of gotten to the point where they've there's a whole bunch of different questers. It's really, really uh, a humorous mm -hmm. um, story while being very feminist. It's not beach over the head feminism. The girls all fight. Um, they have awesome, there's elves and there's trolls and 
or uh, dwarves, I'm sorry, and the, the elf and the dwarf are always like calling each other slang names for mm -hmm. elves and dwarves, and there's a smidgen who's this mm -hmm. tiny little elf-like girl, and she's like, can we stop with the racism right now and <laughs> kill the monster? <laughs> um, it's really Sold. funny, really fun, kind of a medieval sword and sorcery, but the leads are all girls. Very tongue-in-cheek funny. Um, the one, the smidgen girl is gay, and the girl's hitting on her at the house party, and is all like, make me the house special. And she's like, well, the house special is mostly just jelly beans and magic mushrooms. Still want it. <laughs> um, I do. It's really great. Uh, I think they just got a deal for a movie or a show. I haven't really? heard exactly oh, wow. what. Really? Um, but there was a fallout... Really bad thing. There was something going on with the writer and the artist, right? The artist, so it's a very feminist comic, and this allegedly there was a domestic something between Were the they artist a and couple? the wife. No, the oh. artist and his wife. Oh, um, wow. It was really well, let's bad because talk about it was, that. Um, it's bad to fill in the blanks. Well, yeah, but but so if we don't know, we can't. I mean, she I, knows. I don't know the whole story. I know what was reported, which was basically um, it's there was hitting involved. Mm -hmm. Someone, she fell down a flight of stairs. What happened to fill in those blanks? I don't know. Um, but he basically came out and kind of said, well, we've been fighting a lot. I don't like being with her, so we're splitting up. But they removed him from the book, and Tess Fowler's taken over the art. So, Oh, the art, oh, the artist, the, okay. Yeah. And the new art is freaking it's amazing. gorgeous. It's Tess so is so awesome. So one of the sidekicks is, is drawing it too, right? Uh, yeah. Linda, maybe? Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. So that's really fun. Do you have that here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't have my copy because I loaned it to someone it's who said, there. hey, I've got a girl who's into comics. What comics should I read well, to impress the, the, the girl? Well, they do uh, Sunstone, <laughs> too. So you've seen Sunstone. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the artist okay. is currently drawing it for a couple issues. Yeah. Okay. And cool. um, if you like web comics, I'm going to pimp out my personal favorite, which, bear with me, it's Lackadaisy Cats. We're talking about a lot of cats here. It's supposed to be bunnies. Love but yeah. um, It's this awesome series of, that's um, 1920s gen runners, basically. It's this group who were underground running alcohol, throwing parties, um, the whole jazz scene. Beautiful, hand-drawn, pencil-drawn <coughs> with um, tones through digital tones, digital colors. Wow, I can verb. Um, but it's all, they're all cats. Oh, but awesome. their being cats has nothing to do with the story except for the fact that they're cats. And the artwork is amazing and they're so expressive and it's such a fun little series. Oh, um, right. Spell it. How do it's you spell awesome. it? L-A-C-K-A-D-A-S-Y, um, cats. Okay. And she's really cute. She uses, she's done her research. This is why I like it because she uses the slang that they used in the time and... Um, you know, there's the, it was very immigrant heavy time, so there's a lot of characters who speak in Russian and she actually writes out the oh, Russian nice. and wow. it's really great. I always appreciate that, like, little extra touch. I mean, I can't read Russian, but, you know, yeah. translation. And all of the, like, the cats are all wearing the fashion of the day nice. and uh, it's really awesome. Okay, so on that, on that note, let's, yes. let's, let's end and then we can have the after party or whatever. Well, from those of us at Drinking With Comics. To those of you. Cuddly and drunken <laughs> fandom, and that hurt my ears. Sorry. <laughs> Good night, Godspeed, drink safe, and read comics safe. And safe. meet in public places through Cuddly. Wear protection. Meet at the comic bug. Wearing protection. <laughs> hey, it's Sean and Mike, and everybody else here at Drinking With Comics. We just want to ask you guys if you dig the show or if you hate the show, if you hate something, you want to fuel that hate. Right? You really want to fuel it, it right? Given your so hatred. here's what you want to do. You want to subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Because you, if you like us, you'll be like, these guys are awesome. There's always stuff. I like them even more. If you hate us, you'll be like, I just if need to keep subscribing. Well, you only subscribe once, actually. But if you really hate us, call us at 424-271-5610. Or write us. that number on back Let us walls. know. Let us know. If you're like, I want to take you guys to see Alice Cooper. All expenses paid. We're down. If you, you know, if you want to. We're just like, you know. I hear Sean gives good blowjobs. Call 424-271-5610. You know what? Yes, leave it in the men's room. It's fine. Yeah, just um, put it in the men's room. And then you're also going to want to follow us on Tinder. You're going to follow <laughs> us on Instagram. Uh, um, Facebook. Yeah, Twitter. I mean, that's a big one, right? Twitter. Jesse Eisenberg wants you to follow us on his website. Clearly. And that's it. MySpace. Are we on MySpace? No. No, no one is. Read comics, drink beer, and <laughs> subscribe, follow us. It's You'll have, you'll have a good time.